Wasatch artists. We're going to do a couple of different lessons that are combined today because I zoomed with the fourth graders and we did a really fun graphic novel um, zoom and I thought I'd just put a little bit of that down on video and use that graphic novel style to address the fifth and sixth grade mandala outer ring, our future ring, and that's the style that we're going to address that in. So first of all, I'll just tell you a really quick how you approach a graphic novel and what a graphic novel means, and that's really just comic book, comic strip kind of art, what you'd read without words, without many words. So um, I've got one example here of a graphic novel. One of the important things about it is it's like um, it's an illustration and so it's communicating. More than just being a piece of art, it's trying to tell a story. And so it becomes um, progressive. You go from something dropping in, it shows the time um, change. It also is really good at showing one thing and then the point of view. You're now looking out of her eyes up at the sky and as you look this enters so you really become kind of a camera imagining a screenplay of what comes next and what the point of view is pov so point of view the progression time progression and then you pan back as a mirror as if you're a camera and you see the whole picture now. So you focus in, you get zoom in, you get time progression, you get point of view, and then you zoom out and you see the whole picture. And that tells a bigger story. So those are kind of the basics of a graphic novel. That time progression can be really immediate too. This happens, she falls in and sinks, and it shows the actual sinking. And what I liked about this is, as she's holding this, then one of the squares focuses in on just those scissors. A very simply, like this is the focus of what we're talking about. And so also that zooming in and zooming out and isolating the one thing that kind of is what they're talking about. Also, I wanna show you really quickly, no words generally, but if they are, they're often in bubbles and said by somebody or thought by somebody or they're ex, uh, exclaimed in big graphic letters, boom, and showing the boom in the, uh, you know, the disintegration of this house in visual, but you kind of need that boom. So that's kind of how a graphic novel works. It tells a story without many words or without any words, shows a time progression, point of view, imagine you're a camera, focusing, zooming in and zooming out and showing what your um, person is seeing and then zooming out and showing the whole person and the whole landscape. So as you lay it out on your um, page, you will draw the outlines. And I just sketched mine in really lightly with a ruler, with a pencil, and most importantly, with a big eraser, because there's going to be a lot of um, misses. So this is like, you know, I'm thinking of myself, the art superhero, right? And here it shows the long view. I've got a whole town. This window is where, here's a zoom in. It's kind of like a science journal where I magnify what's happening in that window. Zoom it out. Oh, there's somebody painting. You can't see very well because I haven't painted it yet. Then you go inside, you see a door to an art studio, somebody in that art studio, and they're saying, come in. They're singing it, so it has little notes on it. Um, little other cues of uh, the lock, the doorknob, get very detailed, um, but most of all, it's a lot of uh, composition with things going out of the page. There's some paints, um, and there's the whole picture of this superhero palette painting, kind of girl and then I use words to say exactly continuing to fight the battle against artistic ignorance da, da, da. so um, that's kind of how you organize and start your story you'll have the story to begin with in your head or what you're trying to say and then you decide what your camera what your head what your camera is going to do you organize all those little squares with composition that we always talk about the elements of art are still there line quality, shape, space, color, 
texture, um, all of those things still uh, amount to something. And within the space, a lot of times this is printed and you use a lot of dark and light. So really push that, uh, the darkness and the light. So I went one step farther. You can use magic marker to do this or colored pencil. I used both with this. And you can see the outlines are very definite. The darks are really dark. The lights are really light. That's pushing values. That make, makes darks and lights really different. Um, the one uh, speech bubble is takes up the entire frame. You can really simplify what you're doing. Don't get lost in putting every detail in. Even in your big scenes, you can um, simplify it very much. Um, so this, it, and you can also uh, color in with different variations, different parts of it, and leave other parts just really black and white. It's uh, mimicking a printing process where you'd only have certain colors that you're printing and the colors would probably be pretty flat. So that's kind of the idea of a graphic novel is novel uh, art that is illustrative. You're illustrating a story. It doesn't stand on its own. Um, art that uh, progresses, that looks like a camera, that simplifies things and tells a story through pictures. And um, so in order to do that, I will, um, we are going to do that with our mandala in our fifth and sixth grade, um, the third lesson in this group of lessons about uh, the mandala and we're exploring ourself in that first one. So if you remember, <clears throat> I have a couple of different memory tweakers. There's the first one we did with the, um, uh, blind contour. It was our self-portrait and we painted it. That goes in the middle, that's self. The next one was community and we explored community through one point perspective and drawing things in our community, adding little bits of map that were part of the community. So this outside piece is going to be part of a graphic novel, novel style and we're exploring the future. So first I always have you brainstorm what are the things that you're going to talk about with your future? We want you to think about what do you want to be or do? Number one, this may be broken up into three or four sections around this circle that you're drawing. Uh, number two, what characteristic will help you accomplish this? So in mine, I was starting to sketch and think about it and powerful came to mind. So I'm writing that characteristic. That's really hard to illustrate with a picture. So you use your words in an illustrative way, in a graphic way to just say it. What is that characteristic? So I put that in to begin with. What do you want to leave behind? What is your legacy? So um, we also talked about what will you do to make the world what you want it to be in your future. So if you're talking about the future, I want the world to be fill in the blank with whatever word. Um, then what are you going to do as a person and what characteristic do you need to make that world uh, be what, you, what it is you want it to be? You can't just sit back and wish. So we're gonna put that all in this graphic novel illustration to show, um, to be able to show the progression of time, to focus in on what's important and to you know use your skills as a graphic artist so we'll come back and i'll show you that okay so i've sketched out just a little bit i'll show you the process to make this happen because it's really quite complex this whole mandala has been a little bit complex but you guys are the fifth and sixth graders so i know you can do it um, the process would be this what i always tell you to do you brainstorm what are um what do you want to be so this is that what do you want to be what characteristic will help you, um, what do you want to leave behind, what's your legacy, make a few different lists of that. Um, and I just, you know, what I wrote down doesn't matter, but just that you brainstorm about it, that you make about three or four different things that are possibilities. When you get to illustrating it, you will have some things that seem impossible and some things that you can do. So that way you have, you know, a few different options to move ahead. Then I would start doing some thumbnails of putting um, squares in place. And the and then I moved on to this, you know, really exploring it in a bigger way. 
of what that will look like and what my story is. And then transferring it onto this circle is gonna be a lot easier. If I've done it this way and kind of decided how my story progresses and what size, I like the variation in size and shape of my squares. I want you to transfer that onto your circle that goes around. So this is eventually gonna look like this, my self-portrait that goes over my community piece. And then this outside part is my graphic novel piece about the future. Um, so I want you to vary the sizes. Remember, big things, little things, medium-sized things. Also within the square itself, you could make another square. I've got a square with a big boat planned out here and I don't know how to work out, but then I did a little square inset where I put um, in and of itself a little sailboat. So think about being really creative about how you break up your little bits. This fish goes through two squares, the top of it and the bottom of it. That's one picture, but I've broken it up. That made it more interesting to me. Then you have one that takes up the whole circle next and it has a bigger view. Or maybe you focus in on just an eyeball or the road going somewhere or just a word. Especially when you're talking about the characteristic that will um, be crucial in making you who you want to be in the future, use that word in a big way. Use at least a quarter um, or a third of your whole circle to explore that word in a graphic way, in a kind of a, a bang, pow, whoops kind of um, uh, font and you know, bring it up, give it space and texture and color and all those things that will make that important. I'm kind of exploring my artist self with a palette and brushes and frames of uh, painting and then put myself somewhere that of what I'm going to paint. And then I'm getting to the place where how do I make the world different? What do I want the world to look like? And I haven't done that yet. I'll try to post a picture when I get that part done, but that will get us on the way there. And when I zoom with you, we'll get into a little more detail about how to really apply those graphic novel um, uh, rules and how to be a camera and how to zoom in and out and uh, use all the elements all more. Right. So I went and finished the um, part of the outside future ring of the mandala project that we're doing for fifth and sixth grade. Remember we did the self-portrait for the middle part. The next ring was community and those will fit like this. And then the next ring is in the future. So what do you want to be? What characteristic will help you accomplish this? Uh, what do you want to leave behind as your legacy? And what do you, what will you do to make the world this way, kind of an indication of your future and a characteristic. So I filled in with colored pencil. You could do it with marker. I think there's a lot of different ways. Marker makes it a little more um, graphic looking, um, but I was doing it with colored pencil to give a little more variation. I didn't completely finish with what the world is gonna look like or how that works. I got this far with it to give you an indication of how that graphic novel look will look around a circle and how you can split up different things in a couple of different panels. I put my real graphic word powerful um, as far as you know what it would take to make me this creative artist that I decided. Um, had a brainstorm, of course. And uh, what I don't love very much as I wasn't really careful about making that word stick out and making the um, background be really a, a different value. So I'm, I'm not loving this, but you'll do a lot better and you can experiment with your sketches. But this is kind of a sound bubble of what I always say and how you say it and um, where I'm painting, what I'm painting. Uh, the creative process, um, kind of finding visual beauty and the freedom of expression. And I'll figure out what that looks like in these last panels and finish it off. But I wanted to show you it that far and get this posted for you to be able to get started on thinking about your future ring. 
and graphic novels and how that'll all fit together. Can't wait to see you at Zoom.